on to total internal reflection what is total internal reflection means the total light ray that moves to the interface will be reflected back to the norm back to the incident ray medium right that is if i take like this let's say you have glass and you have air here if you send a light ray perpendicular to, see, to this medium you will see the light ray won't be refracted right so it will move through the normal without getting any refractions right but if you form an angle if you form if the angle of incident ray like this from glass to air it will be refracted away right? if you increase this incident angle that forms with the normal you can see this light ray bends towards this interface right what will happen when you increase this angle of incident angle of refraction also increases according to that index of refraction or the refractive index and what will happen at a certain moment when you increase this angle of incident more you will notify that this refracted light ray will move through this interface right so what will happen when you are increasing the angle of incident moment by moment at one moment you can see the refracted ray will move along this interface right making an angle of refraction of 90 degrees here right so this is a special situation right at this special situation the angle of incident is known as the critical angle we are calling this as the critical angle that is simple c critical angle if you increase a bit more what will happen every light ray that is going through this interface will be reflected back to the incident ray that means if I take the medium as this, this is glass and this is air. If we increase furthermore, what will happen? It will be reflected back to the same medium where it came. Right? So that angle of incident and angle of reflection, here it is reflection, will be equal to each other. Right? As a normal refraction, the light ray will be reflected. A special point for you. Normally, if the light ray goes perpendicular, all of the light ray will be moved through this interface. But here, in this part, when there is a reflect, when there is a refraction occurring, there will always be a small reflection too, right? even though there is a refraction there will be a small reflection too right so we will always notice when there is a light ray moving towards an interface there will be a refracted ray and a reflected ray but majority of the light ray will be refracted through these mediums right so what happens when increasing the angle of incident is the percentage of the light ray that goes through this medium decreases right so that at a certain moment greater than this critical angle what will happen all of the light ray that is going to the interface will be reflected back to the same medium right so total internal reflection is everything occurs only if the light ray moves from denser medium to rare medium right why is that if you consider a medium like this if you extend these two let's say this air this is water what will happen if the incident ray comes from air 
the refracted ray will be moved towards the normal. Right? That won't be refracted away from the normal, it will always be refracted towards the normal. That is why you can't get any total internal reflection when light ray moves from rare to denser medium. So, to occur total internal reflection, to occur critical angle, always the light ray should be moving from denser medium to rare medium. If you take the two medium size N1 and N2, let's say N1 is greater than N2, so that N1 becomes the denser medium and N2 becomes the rare medium. Right? Let's say the Let's say there is an incident angle going towards this interface which forms the critical angle. Right? So if you take the value of this sine of this critical angle, that is sin C, this will be equal to N2 divided by N1. This will be equal to N N2 divided by N1, that is the refractive index of rare medium divided by refractive index of denser medium. So if we use normally this N2 as AR, refractive index of AR is always we are taking it as 1. Normally vacuum normally refractive index of vacuum is 1 but like as vacuum cannot be practically maintained or practically gained we use refractive index of AR as 1. Right? So sin C value we can write it as sin c is equal to 1 over n1 right? so this n1 will always be the medium in which the light ray comes from the sin c value depends only on this medium that is the medium in which the light ray comes from so if you take critical angle for water that will be around 48 degrees 35 minutes but we normally write it as 49 degrees if you take the critical angle of glass that will be 41 degrees 48 minutes so if you round off this you will get 42 degrees approximately and also critical angle of diamond is normally about 24 degrees right if you take diamond and if you pass a light through diamond what will happen if the incident angle is greater than 24 there will be always in total internal reflections you also when you are sending a light ray through the glass into air if you increase the incident ray if you increase the angle of incident greater than 42 degrees what will happen total internal reflection will be always happening let's move on to applications of total internal reflection so there are mainly lots of applications from total internal reflection if you take one let's take optical fibers In optical fibers, what happens if you take a tube like this? When a light ray is entered towards this tube, what happens? This light ray undergoes total internal reflection so that it moves through the tube without getting any refractions. Right? So What's the use of light normally? Normally, light is used to observe things through our eyes, right? So, if you can send light through a tube like this, you can observe anything from a tube, right? Normally, light moves in straight lines always, right? But, if you can send a light ray through a tube like this, even though the tube is having curves you can send light rays towards this curve right that's the importance of this optical fibers right normally the diameter of this tube is about uh, 0.5 millimeters right 
So these optical fibers are normally used in telecommunications, right? So if you have heard about these telecommunication lines as fiber line technique or fiber line optics, right? Uh, fiber line internet connections, right? So that is used in telecommunications and providing internet connection. Also, it provides. Uh, have you seen that uh, decoration light set in which there are so many fibers and a light underneath? What happens? You can see light that are pointing from this tube, right? So this is also an application that uses the total internal reflection, right? So if you bend this fiber and if you break it, you can see the light ray comes only to this point. Other than telecommunication, this is used in medical field also. Have you seen endoscopes? Right? In endoscopes, also endoscope is used to observe internal organs of the human body, right? Also in ectoscope, this total internal reflection is used. If I take number two, total internal reflection, I will write it in short form, total internal reflection by prisms, right? Total internal reflection by prisms. Here, we use a prism with 90 degree angle and to 45 degrees angle, right? This is the prism we are going to use. So normally, if you take a prism, prism is like this, along. solid right for the ray diagrams we only take this cross-sectional part so we delay it is prisms can be used to reflect light by 90 degrees as well as by 180 degrees we will see how the light rays bend at 90 degrees right here the same prism is used as before If I take the prism like this, here it is 90 degrees, here it is 45 degrees. So it's kind of isosceles triangle where these two sides are equal. Okay. So if I center light ray that is perpendicular to this, what will happen? There will be no any refraction at this point. So it will move straight and it will hit this interface right so if i draw the normal for this point for this interface right if i draw the normal as the light ray enters perpendicular as this will be 90 this will also be 90 degrees right so if this is if this angle is 45 degrees definitely this angle should be 45 degrees right so this angle is 45 degrees the normal is always drawn perpendicular so this total angle should be 90 degrees if this is 45 degrees this part should be 45 degrees this part should be 45 degrees so normally I said before critical angle of glass is 42 degrees right so as 45 is greater than 42 what will happen there will be total internal reflection so this light ray will be reflected back like this so as in reflection angle of incidence is equal to angle of reflection so if this is 45 degrees this will also form at 45 degrees and the light ray will be moved outwards bending at 90 degrees here 45 here 45 altogether the light rays bend 90 degrees To bend a light ray of 180 degrees, you should keep the prism like this. Right? Let's say you are sending a light ray perpendicular to this interface. What will happen? It will move along, move through this interface without getting reflected, and it will meet this face, meet this interface. Right? So as this is 90 degrees, this will be 45 degrees. 
I told it before critical angle is 42 degrees normally so the so incident angle is greater than critical angle what will happen there will be total internal reflection if I draw the normal here if this is 45 this will form a 45 degree incident 45 degree if this is 45 this will also form 45 degree reflected angle and then here also if you draw the normal for this interface this incident will incident angle will be 45 so it will be total in turn reflected back with 45 degrees 45 degrees like this so if you can send the light ray perpendicular to a 90 degree prism 90 degree accessories prism you can bend the light ray 180 degrees using this method.